Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt Inch and Quarter Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2022 Nissan Rogue. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed and the great part is it's a hidden cross tube meaning the only thing that you're going to see is the receiver opening and the safety chain loops on your hitch so you get a nice clean OEM look with all the functionality of having a trailer hitch. Now this one is an inch and a quarter inch receiver tube opening so this is a little bit smaller than the standard two inch uh, so you might be a little bit limited when it comes to ball mounts, cargo carriers, and bike racks but if you already have those accessories this is going to be a great option. Now Kurt uh, as well as a few other manufacturers offer a two inch version of uh, pretty much the same hitch that I would maybe prefer if this is your first hitch and you don't have any accessories. It just opens it up a little bit to what you can get um, as far as those bike racks and cargo carriers, you'll have a lot more options. Now, all of your accessories are gonna stay in place with a half inch pin and clip. This is not included with the hitch. A lot of times your accessories will come with it. Um, if you plan on leaving your accessories on your vehicle, you might wanna look at a locking pin and clip. That's really nice. You can lock it in place and leave your accessories on there and know that no one's gonna walk away with them. You have a rolled solid safety chain loop here. So if you plan on pulling a trailer, you can hook up your safety chains with a standard S hook or even a larger clevis style is gonna work just fine on here. Now, speaking of towing, you are gonna want to check what your vehicle can tow first off and then compare that with the hitch numbers. You're gonna take the lowest of those two, that way you're not overloading anything. And this one has some decent capacities at 3,500 pounds, which that's gonna be your gross trailer weight rating. And that's gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. Now your tongue weight rating is gonna be the weight that's put on the inside of the receiver tube open. And that really comes down to your bike racks and cargo carriers or things that are suspended off of the hitch. And this one's rated at 525 pounds, which is pretty solid. Uh, that means, you know, uh, your inch and quarter are kind of limited on bike racks. So I really don't worry that you're gonna go over that weight capacity. Um, so this is definitely good if you plan on loading up your bikes or if you plan on getting that cargo carrier on vacation. Uh, this definitely has a good tongue weight to be able to handle that. Now the end of the receiver is pretty recessed from the rear fascia, which is nice. You're not going to hit your shins on it as you walk by, but something to keep in mind from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia, we're looking at about five inches. And that's going to be important because some of your folding accessories as they stow, you want to make sure it's not going to make contact with the rear fascia. So something to look at is uh, the specs on those uh, any accessories that you'll pick up to make sure that it's going to clear. Now, something to keep in mind too, when they are stowed, you're probably not going to be able to open up your hatch, but if they're empty, you can just simply drop those down and open up that hatch. As far as ground clearance goes, this one's coming in at 12 inches, and that's going to be really important for choosing a ball mount because you can measure the coupler of your trailer when it's nice and level and take that measurement, compare it with the 12 inches and determine the riser drop necessary. Now keep in mind, if you have suspended accessories on like a cargo carrier bike rack, it is going to extend the length of the vehicle. So as you go up inclines, those are gonna to wanna to tilt towards the ground. So if you're going up a steep incline or over any big rocky rough terrains or big bumps, uh, just keep in mind those can make contact with the ground. So just be aware of that when you have them loaded up. Now, if you're worried about installing this yourself, do not be afraid. This is a nice, easy one. All you really need is a three quarter inch socket, a torque wrench, and maybe an extra set of hands to get your hitch raised in place, but it just bolts into the factory weld nuts that are already there. There's no trimming required, and you could definitely do this in your driveway or garage in about 15 minutes. So I'll walk you through all the steps to make sure you get your hitch installed. So let's take a look at that. To begin your installation, you're gonna to wanna to grab the bolt from the hardware kit that's included with the hitch. And we're gonna to test to make sure that this goes in nice and clean. Sometimes over time, water can build up in the weld nuts, creating it uh, a little bit of tension when you put these in. So making sure these feed in before we raise the hitch up is gonna save ourselves a little bit of headache. Now we're gonna be looking at this weld nut as well as the one on the furthest rear. And just take your bolt, it should kind of just thread in there nice and easy. And if you're getting any resistance, that's where we're gonna, you can either power this through with an impact or, but if it's binding up too much, you don't wanna damage the thread. So what you can use is a tube brush, which uh, does a good job of just kind of cleaning out these holes. Uh, this is just gonna kind of uh, be a you know wire brush here that will, knock any of that debris loose. You can use some penetrating oil to help it along. And if it's really serious, you could get a tap to go through those, but generally you should be able to get it cleared out enough to get your hardware in. So just test to make sure that all your hardware threads in fairly easily. 
Now in the instructions, they say to take out these plastic push pins here to give you a little bit of extra room to get the hitch up in place. Well, I went ahead and tested ours and it doesn't seem like there's any issues of getting it up there. So you could probably skip that step. If yours maybe is a different trim package and it's a little tight, feel free. You can pop these out using a flathead screwdriver. You'll just simply pry on the center portion, get that to pop out and then you can remove the entire plastic push pin. It's just these two and that's gonna give you a little bit more flex to be able to slide that hitch up but since ours has the gap we'll go ahead and get our hitch up now before we get our hitch raised up you're going to want to get uh, your bolts kind of set up with your conical tooth washer at least one on each side and the teeth of the conical tooth washer is going to bite into the hitch so just make sure you have it in this orientation and our goal as we raise this up is to get one started on each side that way the hitch will be supported it makes it a lot easier to get the rest of the hardware in so we'll just raise this up if you need an extra set of hands this might be a good time to ask for that and as you raise this up, you're just gonna wanna make sure that the driver's side goes over the exhaust tip. And then from there, just align the weld nuts. You can kind of feel that with your finger and then just kind of get a few threads started on each side. You may need to move the hitch around to get this to align, but just by hand, we'll get that started and I'll go to the other side and get one started as well. With those in place, we'll go ahead and get our other hardware hand tightened in place. Now you may need to lift the hitch up or slightly move it around to get these to align, but they should thread in nice and easy. Now with a three quarter inch socket, we'll just go through and snug these down. Now we'll come back with that same socket and a torque wrench. Now, uh, the torque settings are found in the instruction manual and based off those, you're probably gonna want a half inch torque wrench to accomplish that torque setting. So if you're picking one up or if you're renting one from an auto parts store, look for the half inch. And this is gonna be important, especially with weld nuts. It's gonna make sure that it's tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch to obviously not become loose, but also not too tight putting stress on those weld nuts. So we'll just go through and torque these all down to that torque setting. Now, once you've gone ahead and got the rest of your hardware torque down properly, if you remove those plastic push pins, you can go ahead, put those back in place. And all that's left to do is load up your accessories, put in your pin and clip and hit the road. And that was a look at installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Nissan Rogue.